Hello everyone, this is Mahad Dad here. So it has been a long time since I have made uh, my last uh, video on my YouTube channel. So for this reason, and uh, after I came back from my uh, summer holiday, I decided to directly make uh, one video so I can make my uh, YouTube channel more active. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can configure uh, EOIP on the Mikrotik router over another tunnel and I'm going to use L2TP tunnel. So we are going to make L2TP tunnel and then making your IP tunnel over it. So why normally do we do that? Because sometimes it may happen that uh, you are an ISP and you buy another ISP and then uh, you want all the customer of this second ISP to uh, pass uh, uh, or to uh, get connected to your PPPoE server which is on uh, your main ISP. So what you need to do then, you can configure some type of tunneling uh, between the two ISPs and then you make your IP to make layer two. And then over there, then all other customers which were for ISP2 will be able to connect to your PPPoE server on your ISP. So I think that it's not very clear for you now, but it's okay. I'm going to make for you now the explanation to show you what is the lab scenario and then we'll start doing the work. So this is the lab scenario. Imagine that uh, we are the owner of this ISP and then we bought another ISP. So they have this uh, router, it is ISP2, and uh, the customers which are under the ISP2 uh, are connected via PPPoE. Now, we don't want anymore that the customers to connect uh, via PPPoE, whether on wireless or on cable, it doesn't matter here, but we don't want them to get the internet service from the ISP2 router. We want them to get this internet service from ISP1. Now, what uh, we will have in this case is that because there is a router over here, which is separating uh, our router to the PPPoE client router, then the, they will not be able to trace or uh, to check uh, uh, our PPPoE server. So for this reason, what we need to do, or I just made it like uh, this example. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create L2TP between those two routers. So this is just a tunnel. I just create a tunnel and then over this tunnel I will make EOIP. So once we make EOIP over the L2TP, then we have a tunnel over the, another tunnel. But why we use EOIP? Because with EOIP we can do some type of layer 2 bridging. So in this case, what I'm going to do here, over here, I will create a bridge interface on this router, which is now my router, after I have bought the ISP2. And then on this bridge, bridge interface, I will put the EOIP over here. So EOIP will be added here. And I will make this interface also inside this bridge. So Ethernet 2. Like this, what I'm going to do now is just like this will act like a bridge, like a switch. Then in this case, this router will be able to reach to that router because we have made some type of bridging between um, between uh, this uh, router and the other router. So this is what I'm going to do in this lab. Let's go now and start uh, working uh, and see how we can configure all of this. So I'm now on uh, uh, the ISP1 uh, router. I'm not going to put points uh, because uh, yeah, it's my first video after my holiday and I'm still a bit la la yeah, la lazy to um, write the points. So please follow what I'm doing as I'm really putting points. So this is a uh, router uh, the ISP1. On ISP1, I only have IP addresses, so this is on Ethernet interface Ethernet1, and this is ISP2, it has IP address, same range. So let's create this uh, L2TP. So I'll go to ISP1, and from ISP1, I will go to the PPP, and then L2TP, we enable it. I'm going to use the default encryption uh, as a profile, that's fine. So that's done. I'm going to use this profile, so I'm not going to do, to do anything with it. Secret, let's create username, which is user1, password user1, and then we put it here, L2TP, and default encryption. This is what we are going to use as profile. Now, as um, IP address, so I'm going to say that once the L2TP is connected, I'm going to get on ISP1 this IP and on ISP2, I will get this IP. All right, so that's it. That's all done. Now we go to uh, the ISP2. And then now I will have to go to interface 
and I will create an L2TP client interface. I'm gonna say over here general, we don't change anything. We say here to connect to 10.0.0.1, to username is user1, password is user1 as we have created. And um, if you want, you can say add the default route. It's not very important for now. And then I'll say, okay, and you can see it's connected. Now, if I look to the IP address, I got it 192.168.12.2, meaning if I ping now the 192.168.12.1, it is working. Very good. So we do have now possibility uh, or the VPN is working between uh, the two routers. Now over this, because we do have two IPs, over this L2TP, I'm going to create the EOIP. So let's go to router one again. On router one, we go to the interface and I'll create your IP tunnel. So the your IP tunnel is going to be configured with the IP address of the L2TP of the other side, which is 192.168.12.2. And then the tunnel is uh, one. Tunnel ID should be the same uh, over here and on the other router where you are going to do the UIP. So I'm just going to use one. So this is done from this side. Now I'll go to router two. And uh, on router two, I have to go again to the interfaces, UIP, and then um, we have, actually we have to go to EOIP. Yeah, that's correct. And uh, over here, the remote address is 192.168.12.1, and the tunnel is one, the tunnel ID should be the same. So here we go, we can see it is working. Now, meaning that uh, those two um, uh, tunnels are up. So now I have your IP, which is uh, um, up, very good. So now what I need to do uh, before we configure the PPPoE server. Uh, so if we go back to here, so what I need to do is that now we have to think that we have uh, at the last tunnel we have now is your IP tunnel, right? between those two. And uh, EOIP can do um, use it uh, for bridging, so you can do bridging. So my idea is that I want uh, this uh, router to act as um, um, as a bridge um, in case, uh, yeah, you may say for me, why we didn't do bridge directly all the way, because it may happen that this router physically is not close to ISP1, so he can reach it only over the internet. That's why we have used the L2TP and then EOIP. Now, what I go I'm going to do is just to create a bridge interface over here. And then on this bridge interface, I will put this EOIP tunnel, yeah, which is actually over here. And then we put that one, which is Ethernet 2, then we have a bridge, and then this router will be having layer 2 with ISP1. Let's do that. Let's go to ISP2, and then I will create a bridge interface. And on this bridge interface, I will put the EOIP tunnel that we have just created, and I will put the interface Ethernet 2. Excellent. So now let's go to the PPPoE client, which is the last router we have. And if we go to IP neighbors, so at this moment, it's still only seeing ISP2. We have to wait a bit and to see if it's gonna see ISP1 router. Let's give it a time. Here we go, you can see now, after a few seconds, I can see that ISP1 has been shown for me. Very good, so we have layer two connectivity and you can see it on the MAC address. Excellent. So, as we have this uh, layer 2 connectivity, let's go now to router 1. First, let's check if the router 1 has already internet. Let me check if we have already connected to the internet. If not, we have just to enable the internet. Not really. So, remember, based on the, the graph, the internet is connected on in the interface Ethernet 2, and I'm going to use DHCP. So, uh, meaning that I have to go to IP, DHCP client, and I enable uh, Ethernet 2. Here we go. So now if I go again and ping to a.a.a.8, .a 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 .8, so it has internet. And if we make ping to google.com to check also if the DNS is working. So it is working. 
Now, the, the last thing we have to do is to not forget to make the NAT because without the NAT, the PPPoE client will not be able to have internet. So we have to go to IP firewall NAT and uh, I will do a rule here to say anything which is going out from the WAN, which is Ethernet 2, then it's to masquerade. Very good. Now let's configure the um, PPPoE server on the ISP1, which I haven't configured yet. Let's configure now the PPPoE server. So we have to go to the interfaces. Actually, we have to go to the PPP. And then we go to the uh, PPPoE server. And then I will create it on the interface Ethernet 1. And uh, we use the default encryption, that's fine. We use this name, and we don't forget that I'm gonna use the default encryption. We just have to create the secret. So the secret is gonna be user2, password user2, and it's gonna be PPPoE. The local address 172.17.0.1, remote address 172.17.0.1. Two. All right. Of course, um, here I'm just putting one IP. In case you want to use pool, you can do that from the profile. So over here, you can just put remote address, and you can say if you, you create a pool and you say that they will get IP from that pool. But as being a small test now, so I'm going to use only a single IP address. All right. So now let's see if our work is correct. I will go to. Uh, the PPPoE client and then I will make an interface and then from the interface I will create a PPPoE um, client so let's see PPPoE client it's gonna be on the interface Ethernet 2 as on the picture it is going to be connected to a user 2 user 2 and we use add default route. Okay, let's wait and see if it's gonna work or not. So it looks for me it's not. So let's see if we can see the PPPoE by doing scan PPPoE server. So something is not correct because uh, let's have a look again. So let's see on router one what we have done over there. So we go to router one and uh, oh, I see where the mistake is. I have created by mistake the PPPoE server to run on the interface Ethernet one. Actually, it's not correct. It should run on the EOIP tunnel. And uh, why is that? Because remember, we have uh, we can't reach to the interface Ethernet one because there is the one interface. Um, so uh, for uh, for the uh, HP two. Uh, so it's an interface connected to the internet. We made a tunnel over it. We made EOIP over it. So now we need to just, because we have bridging here with the EOIP on this router. So meaning that also over here, we have to make the PPPoE server on the EOIP. So let's correct that one. Sorry for this mistake. And now we go back to the router. And now if I make again on this one, PPPoE scan. So here we go. We can see. Like directly when I scan, I can see now the ISP1. Very good. So we go to here and then we put again user2, user2, and then I will say apply. Okay. And then here we go. We have an R. R means running. So it's running. If I look to the IP address, it is getting IP address. And if we make ping, let's ping to google.com directly. We can see it's working, but uh, yeah, you have to be careful. You have the DNS over here. I put it manually. So you can see it is perfectly working without any problem. And uh, this way you can configure the uh, uh, EOIP over uh, L2TP in case you want to do layer two connectivity. This is the best way to do it. So if you like my way of teaching, please do not forget to put a like on the, this video, uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, click on the bell. So you are notified by any new videos that are coming on my YouTube channel. And also I would like to ask you to visit my website, which is mynetworktraining.com, where I have a lot of online courses that uh, you can uh, register there for a very small amount uh, uh, of money 
then you can gain access for all my video courses. Thank you very much for your time and till next time.